Hey, today I'm talking about the Before Trilogy. These were all directed by Richard Linklater and starred Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy. And it's going to be a little bit difficult to kind of talk about these without spoilers. I'm going to do the best that I can, but like, I crazy love these movies and would wholeheartedly recommend them. Like they're so good. Like I'm going to get into it in a second, but like they're incredible films that are well worth a watch. So I would say like, just go for it. Just watch these movies. They're so, so good. You want beautiful, incredible romance films? These are beautiful, incredible romance films. I'm still going to do my normal reviews and try to be as spoiler free as I can. But like, man, I just, I just really recommend to go into this trilogy without being spoiled as much as possible because they're just, it's so delightful and so charming and so fun and they go into such unexpected places. It's worth it to go into it as fresh as possible. So yes, watch these movies. Now I'm going to do the rest of my review. Up the stuff is Before Sunrise. This is a 1995 film and the basic premise is this American boy is traveling through Europe by rail and one day strikes up a conversation with this incredibly beautiful French woman. Unfortunately, after a little while, he has to get off the train and so he makes an impulsive decision to ask her to come with him. And then they spend the rest of the movie just walking around Prague chatting about life and romance and sex and everything in between and it's so incredibly good. Within the first 20 minutes of the movie, I thought to myself, how come I didn't watch this movie a decade ago? Like, it feels like such a great tragedy that I've spent so much of my life without this movie. It's so beautiful and so incredibly well done. Like, I kept thinking to myself, that was such an incredible line. I have to remember that. And then like the next scene would happen or the next conversation would happen. And I would think the same thing again over and over the entire film and like it essentially just equated to I wanted to remember everything from the movie because there were just so many incredible moments and lines. It just uh, such an incredibly well done film and it's so impressive too because like it feels like it's improvised that it's like this is just an actual conversation that we're witnessing but it's not. It's all pre-planned out. Every single like overlapping line of dialogue was planned out. It just goes to show how good the writing was and how good the performances were that they were able to sound and feel so naturalistic. I loved everything about this movie. It just consumed me. It was such a beautifully done, incredible experience. I cannot wait to watch this movie again and I cannot recommend this movie highly enough. It's so well done and 100% worth a watch. The next up is before Sunset. This is a 2004 film and it picks up nine years later. I won't say what the exact premise is because the first one ends in a cliffhanger and I was like oh there's only a couple different ways that this could play out but like they still picked up this movie with a story that was still very unexpected to me and worked really really well. It was such an interesting well done idea. They didn't miss a beat with coming back to this one. It's definitely you know very similar to the first one in that it is another time where these two kind of go on a long walk together, this time in Paris, having a long conversation. This time also plays out essentially in real time, which is pretty neat. What I really love is how they've evolved as people and also how aware the movie is of like what the first one was and what this one is now. That was really, really well done. I feel like this one almost has more romance in it, which was really impressive. Like it ends with one of the characters singing and I'm like, oh my God. God, this is just so beautiful. It's interesting too, like how the conversation has changed because it really feels like Celine kind of dominates the conversation, but not in a way that's like annoying. Jesse just wants her to just endlessly talk because he just wants to hear all of the things that she has to say in this instance. And she has a lot of like unresolved emotions that she really, really needs to get out. So it's very cathartic to just like kind of word vomit. Though it never really feels feels like word vomiting because it is just again very naturalistic dialogue and he is actively engaged in the conversation even though he's not speaking. Ethan Hawke does a very good job of listening. I was thrown off a little bit because both Ethan Hawke and Julie Depley got very skinny for this one. I don't think they intentionally got skinny for this movie. I think just that's where they were at in their careers at this point. It was the early 2000s. Everyone was bone skinny in Hollywood. So that did kind of take me out of the movie a little bit. So that sucks. But 
uh, yeah, no, it's still just a fantastic movie that's well worth a watch. Just keep on watching this trilogy. It's so incredibly worth it. I love this movie to bits. Definitely keep watching. And lastly is... Before Midnight. This is a 2013 film, again taking place nine years later. And again, I can't say the premise really because it spoils the end of the last one, which wasn't great. It was an incredible ending. I loved it a lot. This one, they do go on a walk, but that's also, there's more stuff going on. There's like a car ride. There's also like different scenes happening in this house. There's like a dinner scene. So it still is like long takes and long conversations. And it was really interesting. I still really love this movie and thoroughly enjoyed it. Though, of the three, I definitely liked this one the least. It's still a really liked, it's still a 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10 for me. But you know, I have to compare and contrast. And so what didn't work for me as well with this one is there's an argument. And the broad strokes of it definitely make sense. But I had issue in particular with how they portrayed Celine. Because part of Jessie's argument is that she's just crazy. And the stuff she says at times times has no logic to it. It just sounds like she's saying crazy nonsensical stuff. And I'm like, no, that's wrong. That's the wrong way to do that. Like there still needs to be a logic to the thing she's saying. Jesse just needs to not be able to recognize them. And so that was just very frustrating. I do want to say though that Celine is very self-conscious about like her age and her aging beauty. She talks about it more than once. And honestly, as soon as the movie started and I saw Celine, I'm like, Holy shit, she is hottest in this one. Like, she's gorgeous in the first one. This is too skinny for my taste in the second one. But this one, like, damn. Damn. What? She's a babe. Wow. Just wanted to throw that in there real quick. <laughs> so yeah, no, even though I didn't have a bigger complaint about this one, I still crazy loved it and would without a doubt recommend it. It's an incredibly beautifully well done movie that honestly ends in the same sort of way as the other two where you don't exactly know where the journey is going to go next. And that was just like sort of frustrating and sad that I'm like, damn it, why didn't they do another one? It's been over nine years since the last one. They could do it. I would love it if we just kept coming back to these two people every day nine years just to see like what's up with their lives. I'm also okay with it ending, but man do I wish there was some more. Even if things kind of take a more negative turn, I would still just love to see what's up with them. I would love it. So yes, thoroughly enjoyed, wholeheartedly recommend. <laughs> All righty, now for today's ranking. First up, we got Before Sunrise, sitting at number four in the really like section. So good. And then after that, Little Ways Down is Before Sunset, sitting at number 13, again, in the really like section. And then bringing up the rear, not too terribly far behind, is Before Midnight, sitting at number 21, also in the really like section. And this is at a total of 138 new movies so far this year.